There's a lot of um, questions in my mind um, because I'm going to be the first one, first male to carry a baby to term if I survived. I can feel the baby actually. Yeah, it's four months old and I can feel he or she kicking. For me to carry alive an emotion that I try to figure out what it is, and um, but I still do not have words for it. Oh my goodness! Finally, it's about time. Does it hurt? A bit. Any morning sickness? You poor guy. Sort of. <laughs> My sister had six kids. By the time she had her last one, she was going, my husband is carrying the next one. Ah, <laughs> tell him to call me. Very cool. Thank you. Power. Thank you. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you. Very cool. For me, it was particularly difficult, uh, just because biologically I'm a man and um, I do not have a uterus. And so we had to do operation. Hi, I'm Dr. Phineas Liu. I'm director of genetic medicine and reproductive endocrinology at RYT Hospital Duane Medical Center. years ago, uh, we determined that male pregnancy was possible based on the success of a number of ectopic pregnancies in women. Here we have a 4D sonogram illustrating the fetus of Mr. Li Mingwei, the first human male to become pregnant. So you have, you can see here, the fetus is actually growing within the abdominal cavity. The same way that this child would grow within the uterus of a female, you can see that happening within the abdominal area of Mr. Lee. We haven't set the exact date for the cesarean section. The surgical procedure will be a bit more extraordinary than your average C-section. Uh, we're actually very confident that the fetus will be perfectly fine. He is a man that he's very comfortable uh, in that role, and it's not that he's becoming a woman, he's a man. The main reason I want to do this project is when I saw my sister were pregnant, I was fascinated with the process and their emotional state. I didn't want to admit it at first, um, but yes, I do have a sense of envy. Male pregnancy disturbs a lot of people, mainly because no one has experienced it and no one has done it before and um, people in nature are in fear of what um, it could be coming and uh, it challenges the very foundation of what is it to be men and what is it to be a woman so when are you going to be delivered huh? I don't know. Do you have a suggestion? <laughs> don't leave it before nine months. <laughs> Maybe in your car. <laughs> Would you like to be pregnant? Ethically, is not allowed by the Christianity, Muslimism. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think Buddhism and none of the religion accept this because this is a very unnatural way. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs>
found how Ow. the baby's doing. Ooh. Yeah. Fine. How are you feeling? Oh, very exhausted. <laughs> Right, you yeah. sit down and yeah. rest for a bit. I'm gonna sit down a little bit. Oh. Check your blood vitals uh, yes. all in the morning. You get some rest tonight. Do you think women are like this or just because <laughs> I'm a man? <laughs> From a cultural perspective, I think men have probably not readily admitted having any jealousy of women because that was such a traditional role of women. That you know, women were the nurturers and my identity as a man is very much rooted in the fact that I'm here to defend them and I'm here to mm. feed them and take care of mm. them in these other uh, capacities. So from a traditional perspective, um, probably not too many men may uh, admit to having any sort of envy. So what is it to be men and what is it to be a woman? The more I look into the question, the more I'm confused at this moment. And um, it's almost like a Zen koan, that the more I ask myself, the more I am further away from the answer, whatever it is. Yeah. It is also a way to make people start thinking, what is going to happen when men can be pregnant? What could be the conversation between genders? Uh, does it mean that the, the identity of being a woman uh, is challenged or not, or even enhanced? I don't know. Um, we shall see what the conversation should be, and I hope it's very, very multi-layered, and it's, there's no just one answer.